Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. Welcome to episode 41 of Non-Monogamy Help. I'm Lola Phoenix. Please send your questions to nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and they'll be in either the podcast or the column anonymously. You're more than happy to let me know which one you prefer. You can read all of the columns and listen to all the podcasts at nonmonogamyhelp.com. If you'd like to subscribe to our newsletter, which comes out once a week, and you get to read the columns and listen to the podcasts a few days before they're out to the public, you can go to go.nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email. You can follow us at Twitter at nonmonogamyhelp. And if you want to be amazing, you can become a patron by going to patreon.com forward slash Lola Phoenix. Even a dollar a month is really amazing. And if you donate five dollars or more a month then your name gets read with your permission at the end of the podcast let's get to before we get to the letter this week let's get to our discussion question and the discussion question as you know is just something that you can take to friends partners other people whoever you'd like to have a bit of a fun discussion with them and this week's discussion question is list the now guilt inducing occasions when you were especially mean to certain people So I picked this one because it's not necessarily relevant to this letter today, but it is kind of in general relevant to polyamory. And I may have talked about it before on the podcast. I can't really remember. This is episode 41 and I don't have the most amazing audio recall ever. But probably one of the times that I was meanest to somebody was when I was in the position of forcing myself to be best friends with a metamor. And I did this because my first polyamorous experience, which you can look up, I did a bit of a podcast with, I think it was Vice, it was with my friend Zing, and it was a first time podcast, and I talked about my first time trying polyamory, and to sum it up, basically, someone used me to cheat on someone that they started dating after they met me, it was really odd. So after that, I was like really intent on meeting all of my metamors and being friends with all my metamors. If you don't know what a metamor is, just as a recap, a metamor is basically a partner of your partner. So in this instance, I didn't have a great introduction to this person. We had nothing in common. We didn't get along very well. I didn't like their communication style. They didn't really appreciate or respect my boundaries and other arguments that we'd had, but I was really, really intent upon being their best friend or at least trying to be their friend. And it's just, it's it's kind of funny when I, when I think back on it, but it was really mean. Basically they were talking to me, asking me how, um, I went to a polyamory speed dating event and they asked me how it went and I said it was okay. And, you know, I didn't think that I met anybody. And I can't remember what, what they said in response, but I my quip basically to them was, well, I can't just meet someone in five minutes and like them. I'm not like you. And um, that was really, really mean. And I did mean it to be mean. I think the person that I was telling this, my metamor, uh, English wasn't their first language, so I don't think they really caught on to how vicious I was being, but I was being really, really mean, and that was just because I was so frustrated with the situation, I was so frustrated by feeling like I had to be friends with this person that I just really didn't get along with, and rather than kind of listening to my boundaries and respecting the fact that I wasn't okay with it, and just saying, hey, you know what, just because we date the same person doesn't mean we need to be friends, um, I was just really intent upon trying to make sure that that happened. And, and I learned from that. I was really mean. I don't. I don't think that the person got it though. I, they. They. They were just like, oh, I'm not really like that. You know, they, they didn't seem to take it personally. But I know my intent was to be mean. So yeah, that's. That's. I'm just gonna list that as, <laughs> as a situation where I was intentionally mean. So let me read the discussion question again, and you can take this to partners, friends, whomever you'd like. List the now guilt-inducing. Uh, I wouldn't say it's guilt-inducing. I mean. It was kind of a mean thing, but I don't feel like extremely guilty over it, but it was a dickhead thing to do. Um, List the now guilt-inducing occasions when you were especially mean to certain people. So yeah, maybe you can think about those kinds of situations. And that's also the biggest reason why I don't for- I I say that people shouldn't force themselves to try and be friends with their metamors, because sometimes it just ends up in you being really mean for no reason. So yeah, that is this week's discussion question. Let's get to this week's letter. (laughs) 
just starting out, boyfriend 46 and I 42 are in love almost five years. Didn't date officially till this year because we live in different states and both have kids. Moving wasn't an option, so I didn't want to date long distance. But he's the best I've ever known and we've decided it's worth the wait until we can combine households. Here's the thing, he's not conventional. I hate to admit it, I am. Too many rom-coms. But at the start, I told him I was open to a one-sided open relationship where he could see another person for mainly sexual encounters. He thought it best not to do that right away. He would be not monogamous for me. Later, he brought it up as an option because of the distance until someone moves, and I agreed if it wasn't a romantic relationship or an ex of his, I'd give it a try. I also could do as I please, but I don't want to see others. Well, he tried it. He hooked up with one half of a lesbian couple couple he'd been polyam with before. I balked when they invited him to a party. Social outings? I hadn't prepared for the thought. Also, the other half of the couple still had feelings for him. Messy. He called it off when I was concerned, to say the least, about the dynamics. He was bummed but didn't want to risk our relationship. He could see the issues at play and was understanding to me. Later, he said a woman from his past reach out, who he had never dated, but they were on and off again regular sexual partners and friends. I thought I might be comfortable with that, so I okayed it. Then he didn't make a move with her, and he told me that he was feeling content without another partner. Plus, we had a few plans where we'd see each other more than usual. We left it open. He could still decide. It came up again. I start preparing my mind for him seeing her when the other night he tells me that they'd argued because he had never gotten around to seeing her yet had flown out to see me a couple times and she's seen me on his social media when his policy for the longest time had been not to post anyone. She felt hurt. I questioned if their encounters were meant to be casual, how could she get jealous of me? Why should she have opinions about him posting my pic unless she harbors feelings for him? Side note, why did he tell me any of this? I'm certain he hasn't seen her in quite a while and not since we've been together. He chastised me that she has feelings, and people aren't disposable. He thought non-monogamy is just not going to work because I can't handle it, and he was disappointed. He acted distant and cold. He didn't seem to like how I felt threatened and scared slash jealous about their fight. I thought it was unfair to me. I've never tried this before, and I want reassurance not for him to defend a potential partner so vehemently. But he's put me at arm's length for the past couple of days. I asked him to go ahead and see her, rip the band-aid off, he's very wary of it, but I don't want someone who believes as he does in a personal freedom to abstain from someone else's company slash intimacy unless it's absolutely his choice. So we started to talk about what that would look like. Bear with me, here come the questions. We wouldn't have quote unquote rules. For example, I can't say no holidays with this person. Is that normal? Healthy? What might he have been thinking to become so standoffish? It really hurt. He said that he saw a different side of me, but I just swear I'm just doing my best with new information and feelings. I'm sure it's obvious that I'm not quote-unquote ready, but I'm willing to read up, meditate, whatever. I'd, really he no I'd rather he not conform to me. I think he should have physical companionship since we don't see each other for a few weeks. I just wish he'd be patient with my learning curve. Is it dishonest to agree to this if I know I will need to work through b big feelings and I'm not sure how yet? I thought our communication and conflict resolution was good, but now I'm at a loss. I don't think he'll leave me. I'm more worried about losing my marbles. We love each other so much. How do I make this work? So, a few things to answer in terms of the questions first. It, what is normal in terms of rules? Generally speaking, I think that you need to look at what the function of a rule is when you set it. If you want to say no holidays with this person, I mean, what what is that rule trying to do? What is it trying to prevent? And is it actually going to prevent the thing that you're trying to get it to prevent? If holidays have this really important big meaning to you, or like, let's say, you know, you, let's say, for example, you don't have any family to go to on Christmas, and Christmas is a sad time for you. This is kind of an example from my own life, like Christmas isn't a great time for me. I don't really have a rule that says that my partner has to spend Christmas with me, but, you know, it is a hard time for me. So if someone is in my life who cares about me, they should theoretically give a shit what I'm doing on Christmas. So, you know, and I do think sometimes rules are put in place that are kind of obvious. Like, if you were in a monogamous relationship, you wouldn't put up a rule that says no being mean to me. Because it should kind of be obvious that you won't be mean to each other. So I think when it comes to rules, it doesn't really matter what's normal because every person and every relationship is different. I just think you need to think about what is it trying to prevent. Quite often when people are new to polyamory, the first thing that they do is put in rules that are trying to prevent someone from falling in love with someone else. And you kind of see traces of that in this situation. Like, 
the biggest thing that bothers me about the situation is that it's not really clear what function non-monogamy has in your life. It's almost too open-ended. Like, at first, it's just a, a temporary thing because you're long distance. And from your perspective, you're coming at this from, you know, this is just for sexual encounters, for sexual companionship. So it doesn't really make sense for your partner to be with people who have any kind of emotional or deep meaning. Equally, I can see it from Harris' perspective that, you know, people have feelings. People do, you know, are, aren't, you know, he could meet someone who j is just interested in sexual encounters and doesn't have any emotional connection to him, but he's more than likely, especially if he's previously been polyamorous and has, and knows other people who are polyamorous, he's more than likely going to find someone he has some type of care for, even as a friend, and people aren't disposable. So I think you haven't really had basic discussions about what non-monogamy looks like in your life. What is it supposed to mean? What are the boundaries around that? And to be fair, I think you haven't had that because you're just trying to roll with the punches a bit because you've never done this before. I find it really, really concerning. You know, you say, what might, have he, what might he have been thinking to become so standoffish? It doesn't really matter to me what he's thinking to become so standoffish. It concerns me that he's become so standoffish. And what I see here is like the first chance he has to have kind of a sexual encounter doesn't work out and you don't really describe what specifically happened but it seems like he made the choice to give up the chance with that because of the potentiality for messiness and because you had concerns and what he can't really do and what it's not really fair to do is expect you expect him to come to you and say I'm going to go sleep with this person and then expect you to be utterly emotionless about it. I think what he did is he called it off and he probably has some feelings about calling it off because maybe he wanted to do that. You just weren't prepared for it. Like, I think you just thought, oh, it's just going to be, they're just going to meet up and have sex. You know, I don't expect them to go to parties together. I don't expect them to be friends. Don't really expect this kind of socializing and that kind of throws me off, understandably. But rather than going, okay, I see that it throws you off. Let's have a talk about this. Let's work this out. Maybe sometimes you have to experience a little bit of anxiety and realize he's still there and you don't have anything to worry about but instead of doing that he calls it off and maybe he has some kind of you know annoyance about that understandably so you know he was trying to be understanding to you but really what he did was just avoid a situation it, you know it, it that didn't really help you in the end was it really going to risk your entire relationship for him to sleep with this person well you made it out to be and he made it out to be more of a mountain than a molehill so in a way it, it i think it just delayed the inevitable you're going to have to have that point if you're going to do any form of non-monogamy you're going to have to have that point where you do freak out and you do feel scared because he's sleeping with someone else if what you're trying to do is avoid that, then it's never going to work. And and I don't think he's helping in that regard. And, and on top of that, on top of him going, okay, well, I'm not going to try this because you feel anxious about it. That, you know, okay, you feel anxious about it. He should support you instead of just expecting you to just feel okay with everything. So what he should have done is support you through that and, and work through that and then have you have that first experience. And then even if he didn't even want to sleep with this other person anymore, you would have at least had that experience. But instead you kind of sideswiped it. So then you go on to this other relationship from his past. Even though they've never dated, they obviously have a friendship. There's all these kinds of, of things that he's telling you. And then, you know, you don't have a great reaction to that, which is very, very understandable. And then he chooses to respond to you having a bad reaction to be standoffish and basically chastise you for not being able to do non-monogamy well enough. And that is, that's kind of the crux of this problem here. It is totally understandable for you to be really confused by her feelings. Now, there may be a long, long history, you know, because you've mentioned how he always had this policy of not posting anyone. If he knew, you know, if he, if he had this relationship with this this new person from his past and they had a sexual relationship before and she wanted him to post pictures and he was like very much not doing it and you know if you think about it a lot of people post pictures on social media with with their friends it's not necessarily that you post a picture on social media with someone it means you're sleeping with them but if he made this big deal about it and was like no 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 I'm not I'm not doing that now and then he meets her again and then he has you on his social media ch you know and then she goes hey, is this policy changed now? Are you kind of putting people up? Are you going to put me up there? And he may have not really thought about that and they argue about it because it's now become a hierarchy thing because he had this big important policy about it. 
So it's understandable that she would react that way. It's understandable that you would then go, well, wait a minute, this is just a casual thing. What's, what's the big deal? They've made it into a big deal. And then on top of that, when you said, why did he tell me any of this? You were spot on, spot on. Why do you need to know about any of this? I, it, it's understandable that he would say, oh, I had an argument with her, but why do you need to know the ins and outs of all of this? And all it does is just stress you out because you're like, oh crap, she's like freaked out that her pictures are on social media. She wants her picture on social media? What does that mean? I thought this was casual. It's confusing for you because you haven't established what non-monogamy really means other than this temporary, that's supposed to be sexual only situation going on. And for you, that's very separate and distinct. For him, it might not be so, but because it's so separate for you, anytime people get into that realm of friends or more than just being a hookup, you're going to freak out about it. It, it's understandable <laughs> it's understandable that this would freak you out and there's really no reason for you to know all this and then on top of that for him to react to you be, being worried about this you know first he in the first situation he reacts to you being worried by breaking it off breaking off a chance with somebody and maybe that wasn't the whole story but that's how he reacts first and then the second thing you have this feelings and you're kind of freaked out and confused about what this means for their relationship. And his response is to be distant and cold and then say it's not gonna work because you can't handle it to basically put the entire blame on you because you're scared and, and, and jealous as if you're not supposed to have feelings. It is unfair. You're 100% right, it is unfair. You haven't tried this before and you're going to be scared. And even if you had tried it before, let me tell you something. You know, the first, I had been polyamorous, I can't remember how many years, maybe three or four years before I met my current uh, domestic partner. The first time my domestic partner went out, and not even all night, but just went out to a party where I knew that they would potentially probably sleep with someone, I was a freaking nervous wreck. And I had been polyamorous before. I was just a nervous wreck. As you're establishing new relationships with people, you know, even though you've been together for a long time, you've been long distance, you're kind of at this weird intermediary stage. You, you say you can't really do long distance very well. You're even pushing yourself to do this because it's not something that really works for you in general. So on top of all of that other stress, you're now trying also this new thing. So of course you're gonna be nervous. Of course you're going to be scared. The first couple of times that you try non-monogamy and, and your partner is with someone else, you're going to be anxious as hell. It's normal. It's natural. That doesn't mean that you can't do it. And I, I really bugs the crap out of me when people expect people coming from a monogamous society to just suddenly be able to do polyamory without any jealousy, without any anxiety, because, you know, whether it's because he is not used to it, maybe he's been polyamorous in so many situations with so many people who either didn't share their anxieties with him or were just so experienced that they just weren't phased about it. Some people aren't phased about it. That's fine. Some people can go on roller coasters. Other people can't. Different people are different. So maybe he's never had to actually manage a situation where his partner's anxious about it. And given how he's managing his other partner by telling you all of the ins and outs of what's going on in their relationship, doesn't really seem like he's very good at managing that in general with anybody. But it's all your fault though. It's all your fault because you can't handle it. That's just such bullshit. It's not fair. It's not fair at all. So yeah, I, I, I do think that this is a problem. Acting distant and cold, keeping you at an arm's length just because you have not so great a reaction, that's absolutely poor as fuck communication. And the fact that he's like, you know, you're, maybe you can't handle poly, maybe he can't handle it. It sounds like he can't handle it. If he can't communicate in difficult situations, like it's okay if like you have a heated discussion and he needs to take a moment, like that's one thing. But for him to be like put you at an arm's length for the past couple of days because you had a nervous reaction, and, and, and I don't think that you were saying that she was disposable. And I do think that sometimes when people try polyamory for the first time and they do have an established couple relationship with somebody, they do get to a, a point where they're so protective of that that they are kind of looking at other people as disposable. But the thing of it is, it's not like you agreed to be fully polyamorous from the start. And that's the thing that kills me. It's like, yeah, people have feelings and they're not disposable, but your original assumption of what this non-monogamy was in your life was that it was just for him to get like his sexual kicks while you were far apart from each other. So of course you're worried that there could be more to this relationship. Of course you're worried about that. That makes sense. It's not like you're saying she's disposable and that her feelings don't matter. You're just like, well, I'm confused that she's having these feelings because I thought this was casual. 
and you're allowed to ask his freaking questions without him, you know, basically putting you in the naughty chair. Just absolutely ridiculous. So, yeah, and I think that, to answer your other question, like, is it dishonest of you to agree to this if you know you will need to work through these big feelings and you're not sure how yet? It's not dishonest of you. But the thing of it is, is, is if he's going to react to you having feelings by keeping you distant and cold and keeping you at arm's length, it doesn't exactly give you total any reason to share your emotions with him. It basically punishes you for sharing your emotions. So next time you are scared, you're just going to want to keep it to yourself because the second you tell him, he's going to act like a big baby about it. So it's not dishonest. A lot of people try non-monogamy, try polyamory, try everything, not knowing how it's going to affect them. And to be honest with you, even if you could be polyamorous for years and then, you know, something tragic happens or you have a big life upheaval and all of a sudden your mental health is all over the map and you can't handle the same things that you could handle the week before with the same grace. That stuff happens. Like it's, it's not, polyamory is not some type of higher level mental achievement that you get it's not some type of upper level relationship unlock code that when you've meditated enough you achieve this i don't even know the right freaking words for it but it's not it's not it's not some higher level of thinking it's just a different way to do relationships and people can be good and bad at it just like they can be good at bad and poly at monogamous relationships given the entirety of their surroundings and what's going on in their lives. It's not a zero-sum simple game like that. It's not at all dishonest of you to, to be like, hey, you know, I'm going to agree to this. Let's just rip the Band-Aid off. And I do think that instinct isn't a bad one because you are going to feel anxious. You just get it over with. Stop waiting for you to just suddenly be okay with everything and just go, let's just do it and manage it and cope with it and see how things go but because it seems like he doesn't want to deal with any unhappy emotions and he just wants you to be okay with everything without him having to do any of that work that's not realistic that that's what's dishonest you know you have to be able to come to your partner especially if you're trying something so new that you're not familiar with you haven't been giving the given the cultural tools to really take by the horns you're gonna be nervous and you need someone you know if not a polyamory friendly therapist you need someone a partner who is going to be understanding of that it's okay to not know how you're going to feel about something and i think that's the other thing that if he had been you know if, if he is more experienced in polyamory the big thing here i see is you giving permission you're like oh, okay you can sleep with this person oh, okay you can sleep with that person and the problem with giving permission and the, th the reason why i always very much discourage people from feeling like they have to give permission is because it does feel like oh you said okay to that person now how do you take that back or it feels like once you've said okay to someone you're not allowed to have any feelings about it so in general I would discourage that and I kind of feel like if he was a little bit more experienced with this he wouldn't be asking for permission he would be like I'm gonna sleep with this person and this is what this involves he'd be really clear with you this is so unclear like you know even though this has been given to you as this is what we're going to do in the in the midterm of us moving in together because i need you know to have some sexual relationships and i've got some physical needs and i'd like to do this what until we move in together this has been what's presented to you not i'm going to go and date and be romantically involved with other people i think it's realistic of you you know <laughs> I do think sometimes when people do that whole like, oh, I'm only going to have sex with other people. I'm not going to fall in love with anyone else. It's not realistic. You know, the boundaries between friendship and, you know, lover aren't always clear cut for everyone. And, and it's also like people don't want, not everyone wants to operate in such a cold way when it comes to like sexual relationships. People want to be friends with the people they have sex with and that's fine. But none of that has been defined for you. So of course you're going to be freaked out. It makes total sense. So, yeah, um, how do you make this work? You don't make this work. He helps you both make it work. And he has to fix this conflict resolution problem because you have to be able to come to him. And this isn't, even if you hang up non-monogamy and you don't try it again, like this is deeply concerning for other aspects of your life. Like, is this how he's going to respond when things get tough? Is to keep you at an arm's length? Like, you, you really need to... I think you both need to find a polyamory friendly therapist and, and talk this through because yeah I do think some aspect of this is you're freaked out about it you're going to be freaked out about it and you do kind of have to the only way out is through you kind of have to go through some of it you kind of have to have him sleep with someone else and know that you know he's not all of a sudden not interested in you you kind of have to experience it and know and live through it and know that you're fine 
in order to kind of get through some of that anxiety. But it's going to be very, 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 very hard for you to do that if the person that you want to come to for reassurance and guidance and patience is going to put you at an arm's length the second you have a bit of a fear about something and it's going to chastise you and and where basically you're in a situation where you need to prove that you can do non-monogamy because his 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 ability to do non-monogamy is totally you know not a question he can do it it's you that's the problem no 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 that's that's not a good approach and it's it's not an approach that's going to even work for monogamy let alone non-monogamy so he needs to whatever conflict resolution and communication skills he's employed in the past he needs to find them and get back on them because this this just isn't the way so to sum up i think that it would be good for you all to start from a place of finding a polyamory friendly therapist if that's an opportunity for you because i do think you kind of need when you have someone who's doing this kind of weird emotional stuff of putting you at an arm's length it is helpful to have like a a, a, a non uh, a non-influenced party but i do think you need to think about what does non-monogamy mean in the context of your relationship is this just a temporary thing i think you need to kind of maybe accept that even if even if he is just seeing people for sex that doesn't mean he's not friends with them doesn't mean he won't go to social gatherings with them and it doesn't mean that they won't have feelings about how he does his relationships but he needs to not tell you about stuff like that like he shouldn't really and you know you can say like look I get that, you know, you're my partner and I, I obviously feel, feel bad that you had this argument and I don't want you to have arguments, but may, I, I can't, hearing this kind of stuff kind of freaks me out. So maybe, maybe I just, it, not, not that it's a don't ask, don't tell situation, but maybe I don't need to know the ins and outs of whatever's going on in your other relationships because it just kind of makes me a little bit panicked. So, you know, I think that's fair. I think that in terms of rules, whatever you establish a rule, think about what it's trying to prevent and will it actually prevent it? Or is it just a way of preventing you from basically delaying the inevitable, which was kind of the first situation here. Like maybe it just didn't work out for other reasons, but he shouldn't pull the plug on something just because you're afraid. You need to experience that anxiety a little bit and you need to have faith in your relationship together and know that it's going to last through that and, and go back to that kind of rock that you've built with each other and try and hold on to that and and just know that it'll be okay you just kind of have to go through the anxiety a bit and he needs to let you have that anxiety he needs to figure out why he's being standoffish and sort that out because he can't be putting you out an arm's length it's this is not a game of you proving yourself to him and he needs to stop putting you in situations where basically his ability to do non-monogamy is unquestioned but yours isn't like granted you are new to this but it doesn't help that he's making this into a the second you have any negative feelings about anything you can't do it like he, he needs to be a lot more patient as you said with some of your feelings in general there's no ready for whether you're ready or not for non-monogamy i think you should try and get rid of that out of your lexicon because your ability to do any kind of relationship has a lot to do with what else is going on in your life. There are people sometimes who go complete hermit, who have a really, you know, not great mental health, and their response to it is to stay at home and not speak to anyone. They don't even do friendships very well when they're feeling depressed. And that, you know, is, is how sometimes things work. It's not a zero-sum game, ready or not ready. Like, different things are going to provoke anxiety and the fact that you're apart the fact that you don't do long distance to begin with very well is already putting pressure so you need to kind of keep that in mind and not set yourself up for failure basically by making it seem like you need to go through this without having any feelings in order to effectively do non-monogamy and last but not least this is a, a big concern in terms of the way he's communicating he needs to not communicate this way it's okay for him to remind you that or this other woman does have feelings people aren't disposable but again i don't think that comes from you just assuming that anyone he sleeps with is someone that can be easily tossed aside the moment you don't feel well and more from a confusion of this discuss you know you assume that the non-monogamy that was happening was about gratifying you know sexual needs and not necessarily about building other relationships so it's just kind of a misunderstanding between the two of you of expectations and what non-monogamy means and if you had that conversation about what it means how it's meant to happen when is it meant to end is it meant to end because you know you say he isn't conventional is he going to be happy being monogamous for the rest of his life this is kind of a big discussion you all need to have and think about and you can't do it all if he's going to put you in the proverbial naughty step the second that you have any feelings about it that aren't happy ones yeah maybe he's not ready 
for non-monogamy, to be honest. If he can't manage people's emotions and deal with the negative feelings that any of his partners have. So yeah, that about sums it up. <laughs> I really hope this helps and good luck. Thank you again for listening to episode 41 of Non-Monogamy Help. If you would like to be an amazing person, I would really appreciate you becoming a patron. Even $1 a month is really helpful. It goes towards the cost for hosting the podcast, social media stuff, all that kind of bits and bobs that help me run things without too much of a headache. So even $1 a month is helpful. It's also a little vote of confidence to let me know that you appreciate what I'm doing. If you give $5 or more a month, then I will read your name out loud at the end of the podcast. And now it's time to read those people's names out loud. And the $5 patrons are Laura Boylan, Chris Alvary Jones, Juke, and James Wartell. Thank you so much for listening. Again, also want to remind you, if you have just five minutes, check out our Twitter feed. And on there, you should find any number of tweets that I've sent out. Uh, a tweet encouraging you to leave a iTunes review. If you could log into Apple, find the podcast on Apple iTunes and give us a review or even just a rating. Like if you don't want to write a review, that's fine. That is really, really helpful. It kind of kicks the podcast up, up the ranks. And yeah, if you could take five minutes to do that, really, really appreciate it. Alrighty then. Thank you so much for listening. And you will hear, you'll get the next column next week and you'll hear the next episode the week after that in a fortnight. Awesome. Thanks. You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Our podcast music has been provided by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com. And the art was made by Dom Jung at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you for listening. <laughs>